Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at Linux Mint 18.3 Mate Edition. Now this is their second flagship edition next to of course their Cinnamon Edition. This is marketed a little bit more as a sort of uh, stable uh, desktop environment whereas Cinnamon is a bit more cutting edge although these days Cinnamon is actually pretty stable and I've had very few very few issues with it but if you want to have a look at 18.2 of course the video is there on this channel today of course 18.3. So this is still based off the latest LTS of Ubuntu which is 16.04 and I would imagine when 19 comes around, which is the next Linux Mint, uh, that's going to be based off of 1804. So this is the last or likely to be the last version of Linux Mint uh, before it gets a new code base. Now, this could mean a few things. Um, in the past, it's it's sort of indicated that the software's a little bit older than it might be on, for example, newer Ubuntu-based distributions or things like Manjaro or anything Arch-based, to be honest, but Arch is pretty up-to-date. So I was a little bit worried that um, when you have a software that's coming towards the end of a of a, of a cycle or when there's like a new software likely to be released very soon um, distros that do base themselves on the Ubuntu LTS can start showing their age so I'll be going through some of the things which actually surprised me because I actually really really enjoyed this distribution and was very very surprised at even some of the more innovative things even given that it is based on the um, Ubuntu LTS code base now Linux Mint tend to favor uh, stability and they do take a lot of um, efforts uh, to to make those sort of slightly safer decisions so they are a little bit the sort of the opposite end of the spectrum to to like maybe what arch users are looking at but and uh, Linux Mint do put a lot of effort into having a very polished experience, very out-of-the-box experience, uh, a very good out-of-the-box experience, um, very easy to install codex, um, and, it, and it was, uh, very easy to install in general. Um, and uh, and it also tends to to make very sort of reserved changes. It tends to fit the Windows paradigm a little bit more, so it's a little bit more welcoming for new users. But one of the things I do like about Linux Mint is that given that it's very very polished, very very uh, suitable for for newcomers to Linux. And I believe it was, uh, I think it might have been like the third distribution I used for any length of time. But it was the first that I genuinely felt comfortable, uh, that I genuinely felt was a a like for like competitor to my windows environment at the time and i think we're talking now about maybe 2009 sort of in that ballpark um it's um apart from games it really did feel like that so and of course i uh, the reason that i actually have a very big soft spot for linux mint is because it supported widescreen resolutions out of the box before ubuntu did i remember having a widescreen laptop shortly after they came out and it was it was it was a bit of trouble trying to find Linux distributions that would actually support those um, resolutions out of the box. It took a couple of months for the for the new distributions to uh, to catch up, but but Linux Mint were actually quite on top of this. So um, and and using the same code base that Ubuntu did. So it's those little changes, those little tweaks that Linux Mint uh, implement that I think are, are really quite. Um, you know, I think like, you know, Ubuntu in a lot of cases get maybe like 90% of the way there and then Linux Mint do the extra 10%, but that extra 10% is, you know, it's a 10% that a lot of distributions expect you to, to, to make on yourself, if that makes any sense. So, um, yeah, I've been trying it out on my secondary machine now for pretty much ever since the beta, or the second beta I think it was, or the latest beta was released, and uh, I've had zero issues with it. Um, the Bluetooth worked really, really quite well. I don't usually test the Bluetooth because I don't really have that much of a use for it, but um, I just thought, uh, in fact it was earlier today, I, I thought I might just play around with some Bluetooth. Um, actually, I managed to get both of these computers um, to play their sound through this, through one set of headphones, so I don't have to keep un you know switching across. Um, using Bluetooth, and it was easy. It was a piece of cake. I got Ubuntu Mate on the main desktop machine here, and I have uh, Linux Mint 18.3 on the laptop here, and it just works seamlessly across. Now, they're both Ubuntu-based distributions, so I don't know how much easier that made it, but... Um yeah, I mean, I gotta say that's 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 nice, and it was easy, and it was it was um, 
it, it was yeah it was just it was just very straightforward to do so you know kudos to, to linux mint for that and kudos to ubuntu mate as well uh, so i've actually spun up uh linux mint in a virtual machine here because um it's just sort of easier to demonstrate and uh and, and sort of show you around and i've got stuff going on on this machine here but uh, but rest assured i can sort of vouch for using it for for about a well for a week or so at least and uh, i've had zero issues in terms of stability um so so there's that. Um, okay. Oh, I just uh, logged myself out with all that nattering. So uh, there is a very good What's New page that does cover quite a lot. Um, but I'm just really going to go through this effectively uh, in person. As you can see here, uh, it's updated to the latest fi the Firefox Quantum. So that's Firefox 57 in case you were wondering. And it, yeah, that's pretty good. It looks good. And it themes well as well. If you can see that it all themes nicely. And the theme isn't sort of like really fancy. It's not one of those really sexy flat themes that's, you know, or dark or anything like that. It's a very functional, but just looks well put together theme. And I, I think a lot of that is, is what, um, what I've come to sort of know and love about um, Linux Mint, that it's not too flashy, it's sensible and just gets the job done with minimal setting up time. So um, well, let's kick off with the welcome screen. I usually, when I look at um, Ubuntu Mate, which Linux Mint is quite often compared to, let's, let's be honest here. Um, so let's have a look at their welcome screen, uh, which is, it's a simpler version of, of Ubuntu Mate in many ways. Um, the drivers, are, um, that's great. So if you want to install hardware drivers, if you've got like a NVIDIA graphics card, if you've got, uh, if you want to use the proprietary drivers for like your Intel or AMD chipset, you've got all of that. You can even um, install drivers if you're running it in a virtual machine and you want a little bit better support. You've got the apps, you've got the App Store documentation. Yeah, actually, the documentation is really quite good on this one. There's a lot of things um, have I got here, maybe if we're going to like flat packs or something like that. Okay, um, in the settings, I think it's in the settings, right? Uh, in the control panel. Um, and uh, I don't know, just pick some, something like Bluetooth or what have you. Is Bluetooth in there? I don't, Bluetooth's not in the virtual ship. Okay, anyway, um, without sort of uh, uh, faffing around with that too much, uh, there on a lot of the uh, system settings, there's a help button as part of the interface. And I used that once or twice. And it's really, yeah, the documentation worked. It was there and it's readily available and accessible. And um, and that was quite good as well. It's something, again, that I don't usually check, but I think I can't even remember what it was now, but there was one thing that I needed just a little bit of a hand with. So yeah, really good help documentation as you go. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's right there. So you don't even need to, you know, Google anything. You don't need to even sort of access a, a PDF or, or anything like that. It's, you know, it's a little help button there and it pulls up the help window. And, um, and I don't know how well that's been for like previous versions or anything like that because I don't, because Linux Mint is just intuitive enough that you don't tend to need that. But if there's, um, oh, it was the um, compositing window manager. That was it. And I didn't know what the difference is. You know, I didn't know what... Um, uh, the benefits of like Compton versus Marco and Marco with Compton and all that kind of stuff and Compis. So I, I wanted to look up that and it was in the uh, little help documentation there and then. And, and it even said like, you know, uh, you, you might want to use uh, Compton with Marco, I think it was, if you wanted to avoid screen tearing or, um, you know, you could use no compositing or anything like that. So you've got options here in, in, in Mate, which is, is really good as well. So if you've got like a slower computer or a computer that runs with a monitor of, I think it's like 144 hertz, um, and don't have to worry about screen tearing. You might want to save a little bit of system resources by turning off compositing, or if you are suffering from screen tearing, you might want to uh, switch to a window managing setup that actually um, prevents screen tearing. So you've got options here. And um, w in, with the nature with the, the Mate desktop, you do have more customizability and more options here than you do with the Cinnamon desktop. So there is a distinct difference there. And I have come down on Linux Mint before for having these two flagship distributions, both of which are very good, but very, very similar, very slight differences. And, the, you know, maybe it's it's worth just, just focusing on perhaps the Cinnamon one. But i got to say that there are a considerable number of circumstances that I've seen now in the Mate distribution where just that little bit of customizability might actually make the difference between someone being really happy with this distribution or having to to put up with something that they're not happy with. So I can see that, you know, I, th I think maybe it would be uh, preferable to have a like a, a greater distinction from a labeling point of view. But in reality, yeah, I can, it sort of makes a bit more sense now that I've seen some of the extra options that are available in Mate and not in Cinnamon. Because again, with Cinnamon, 
if you're looking at trying to build a very user-friendly desktop environment, you don't want to overwhelm people with too much customizability or options or anything like that because it just tends to get in the way of um, of the options that you kind of want to get into. There's like you know too too much choice. There's too you know. So um, there is a there you know I know that's a, a sacrilege to say in the Linux community too much choice, but um, and customizability like it is a cornerstone of the Linux community and and uh, that is very very true. Which I guess you know you've got the choice between a uh, customizable distribution and not a customizable distribution in that case but anyway enough of my waffling on so the start page whereas it's a little bit more bare bones than uh, the Ubuntu Mate one it does the it does the same job and the software manager so the software manager looks like this when it's not maximized much maximized the fun of it I like their selected options the editors picks that's really good um, what I mean by it's really good is that these are applications that people are likely to install on first boot. Steam in particular, Skype in particular. I, I suppose Blender, if you're um, if you're into the graphic design and animation and what have you, uh, G Parted and stuff like that as well. Um, it's nicely laid out. It's responsive. It's customizable. Um, packages so yeah and all of the packages as well they have like a comment section beneath it so people can say so let's for example if we have a look at Skype. Uh, so the, you know this this application slows down, or you know it gives you it gives you an option, and it gives you you know reviews, stars. So it's Skype for Linux found some bugs, yada yada. Again, that's obviously going to be down to Skype's fault uh, rather than Linux Mint, but it gets three point three stars. Um, and if that is the Electron version, then um, then uh, yeah, which I assume it is because um, uh, because the other the the old version isn't uh, isn't supported anymore so um yeah uh that gives you a greater idea it gives you more options it gives you more information when it comes to uh there you go that gets four and a half stars describe Scribus is really good it's not the prettiest looking program but it is good so uh yeah it gives you a little bit more context a little bit more information on the applications that you can install and some of you may of course noticed well, there's a flat pack repository from FlatHub. Now I think FlatHub, FlatHub is the only repository, um, the only um, flat pack repository. Do they call them repositories? I'm going to call them repositories if you know, like. But yeah, they've got um, FlatHub, so you can install uh, applications from FlatHub. And um, yeah, you've got a few. You've got your Discords. Uh, you got Discord there if you want it. You've got uh, GNOME Games. I installed that. GNOME Maps, and these are more up-to-date versions than you'll find on Linux Mint. And this is likely to be a game changer for a handful of you out there. And then there's uh, Skype there as well. So um, and that only gets three stars. It's all right. Discord is better nowadays. Yeah, yeah. I guess I gotta kind of agree to that one. But there's only one review there. It was made by. It was made on the 18th, so that's quite a recent one. Um, so there you go. Um, you've got two uh, two versions of Skype, and I, w I would assume that both of them would be kept up to date. Um, even though the the Firefox that you ha um, have installed as well uh, is uh, part of the Linux Mint repositories, it, it does get updated with the times as well. So not everything in the Linux Mint or in the distribution repositories stays the same as it was two years ago. It d like certain packages do get updated, but of course, uh, for the sake of um, stability and the overall well-being of the distribution, uh, not everything is uh, is pushed. It tends to be just security updates more over anything else. But that's not it's not the hard and fast rule. But um, but with flat packs you have the option of installing newer versions of the software that gets updated to the latest version. Now, in fact, I installed Mind Test and I did check and it was the latest version of Mind Test there. So uh, I think a lot of it comes down to how it's packaged on their end. But if you want up-to-date packages um, without um, having to rely too much on the underlying system, Flatpak is a really good option for that. And if you want like a really strong and stable base for, for Linux Mint, um, but you have like one or two applications that you want uh, up to date in the newest versions of, then this could very well be uh, a great option for you. Now, there isn't a, a huge amount of applications in the flat uh, in the, in the FlatHub uh, repository in the uh, Flatpak section here. It's a decent amount. A lot of these you will find in the distro repository as well. Oh, you got OpenMW. That's pretty good. Um, 
so you do have a lot of options there, and I suspect that this will continue to grow. And um, it's nice that they put this in before going over to 19, because I, I, I really think that this is going to grow into something really, really, really good. And it's interesting that they've decided to go with flat pack and not snap, but I would very much assume that because this is based on Ubuntu LTS, that you will be able to have snaps as well if you install them and set them up. But uh, I've installed a few things in the um, from the flat pack repository here, and they work fine. I think if you load them up for the first time, it takes a while, you know, they're, they're, it's a little bit on the slow side, but once you've like loaded it up and it's all sort of got itself going, so first launch, you know, there's a bit of a delay, but other than that, you've got Discord here, so that's from the uh, from the flat pack. Uh, got GNOME games here, so oops. Um, as you can see, it looks quite nice as well. Now there aren't many distributions that actually come with a backup uh, utility included, as far as I'm aware. Linux Mint 18.3 does, and it looks like a pretty good one. So it looks like you can take a snapshot of your software selection and your distribution as you've set it up, and then reinstall that if your hard disk uh, gets corrupted or whatever. Um, and you can also um, back up your personal data. Um, and it's like, so it gives you a few options there. I haven't actually tried it, but it is nice that it's included. So, um, so I'll, um, yeah, I, I think that that's great that they've actually included that in as a default um, application because backup is something that so many people don't do but really really should do like backing up is important <laughs> like well I, I feel like I'm preaching to the the choir on that one but yeah um, so I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to say good welcome screen uh, lots of new features even on um, an 18.3 release so a point three release that's great uh, yeah great software center uh, flat packs work amazingly. Well, I say amazingly. I had no issues getting flat packs to work, and uh, yeah, the driver insta installation feature here is uh, is just is just a piece of cake. Uh, I suppose I could talk a little bit as well about um, is that that's the uh, about the um, the uh, about the update manager. I mean, it's a really good update manager, and it's easy. You know, uh, you get the options, uh, you get various options as to uh, how aggressively you want to update your packages as well. So if you want something stable, you only want to update perhaps the, the security packages. You've got that option. Uh, you've got the option to only secure the security updates, but you get to see the other updates. So in case there's a piece of software you've got your eye on, you can perhaps choose to update that. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, it sticks to the safe bet. And then there is an option to just update everything. So uh, I usually choose the option to update everything and I've never had an issue with it. Um, and the uh, option to update everything, as far as I understand it, is pretty much the default setting, the standard setting that you'll get on any Ubuntu LTS uh, release as well. So this is one of the examples where Linux Mint takes an extra step to try and, and make Linux Mint just a touch more stable uh, than its, uh, than its uh, Ubuntu big brother. So I think that's about it. But yeah, like I didn't expect to be as impressed by this distribution considering it is a 0.3 release, but it's really good. I had zero stability issues, uh, zero issues with software. Everything worked as it was supposed to. And I pretty much have zero complaints. Now, when the next long-term support release of Ubuntu drops, Linux Mint usually follows suit maybe about a month later based on that code base. And I'm probably going to be installing an, an LTS on this machine, and I'm gonna I'm I'm likely to keep the LTS on for two years, because I'm starting to value a, a, like a more structured and more stable system. There, I can of course use whatever distribution. I can change my distribution weekly on my secondary machine here. But when I need to rely on things like you know, if I want to do a stream and I want something ready to go, or if I want to record a video on short notice or anything like that, um, having a like a ready to go machine with all my settings ready to go um, and set up that I only have to sort of you know recap every two years is is likely to be really really useful and um, and something nice and stable, but with elements of it that are kept, you know, the elements that I want kept up to date. I think that maybe like Linux Mint 19 might be a serious contender for my primary distribution. If 18.3 is anything to go by. Of course, a lot of that is contingent on how good Ubuntu 1804 will be. Because when Ubuntu 16.04 came out, 
there were some issues. Like, it, it was not one of the better Ubuntus. In fact, the Ubuntu before it, 1510, I believe, was significantly better, uh, or at least more more stable and more reliable in that regard. Now, obviously, the LTS uh, 1604 has had longer to work on its act, and it's pretty much patched up all of the issues that it had initially. They took their time. So I will say that 1604 was not the best of Ubuntu releases, truth be told. But... Um, and and I think some of that did actually come through into Linux Mint, unfortunately. There were some issues with the underlying software. So if 18.04 is, is a solid Ubuntu release, it's going to be hot competition as to whether or not I go with an Ubuntu-based release or Linux Mint. Or possibly, you know, you never know. I might just fly off the handle and, and go Manjaro <laughs> again. That was good, actually. I had a great time in Manjaro. A lot of good distributions out there these days. And a lot of it is just, you know, finding the glove that fits for you. So thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope this has been somewhat useful and not too rambly, although I have a feeling it is. <laughs> and I'm going to upload it in its uh, that way as well. Uh, so that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.